Hello there, welcome back. So today we are going to start our first calculus topic, which is the study of limits. Um, so what I thought we could do first is do a little bit of a review. So let's review by drawing the graph of the function f of x equals x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. Um, so this is a rational function because we have um, two polynomials um, divided here. Um, we're going to simplify this. So we can do that by factoring the numerator and we'll get x minus 1 x plus 1 because this is a difference of squares. And this is x minus 1 here. There's a common factor of x minus 1 so that's going to cancel here and we'll get x plus 1. And we'll just have to remember that x equal to 1 was never part of our domain in the first place. So um, I'll write that right here. So we have x cannot be equal to 1. So let's draw the graph of this. So this is a line where your y-intercept is going to be 1. So I'm going to go up here to 1. And then the slope, what would that be? The slope is also just 1. So from this point that I drew, the y-intercept, I would go up 1 over 1. And I could even go the other way. If I ran out of space, I could go down 1, left 1. And when we reach x equals 1, I actually should not have a point there, but this point that I drew, if you remember, that's going to be a hole in the graph right there. So we aren't actually defined at the x-coordinate for 1. However, we do see that as you travel along the graph in the left direction and in the right direction, so if you come at it from the left and the right side, the graph is actually approaching a value. You would expect it to approach 1. However, 1 isn't actually x equals 1 is not actually defined for this graph. So this idea of approaching a certain value is what we're going to cover today. Um, this is called a limit. So let me give you the definition of what a limit is. So the definition we'll use is we write the limit, so it's just lim, as x approaches a of a function f of x equals l. And this represents the limit of f of x as x approaches a, and it equals l. So this a is a specific x value that we've picked out, um, and this arrow just means that the x is approaching the specific a value that we've picked. Um, so what does it mean like in English? So kind of like the, the loose way of explaining this without like the mathematical notation is um, provided x is close enough to a, lowercase a, we can make the value of f of x as close to L as we like. So if we're not um, close enough to L, all we have to do is scoot x even closer to the a value. And then we can get um, within some small distance that we choose um, for this L value here. So if we look at the example we just had before here, the value that we're expecting the graph to go to um, would be the limit here. So where would we expect the graph to go to? Well, at f of 0, or at 0, um, the function is at 1. and um, if you were to plug in, say, I don't know, 0 
um, into my function up here, I would get 1.5. And if I wanted to determine, OK, well, what's the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x, I'm really asking the question, OK, well, where do I expect the graph to be at 1? Um, this is not a question of whether it's defined or not. It's just where do you, what's the behavior of the graph doing? So as you get closer on the left side and on the right side, you can see that the graph is actually going to approach the value 2. And again, this idea of approaching and making f of x as close to the value of l as possible, this just means I can keep getting closer and closer to 1. So if I plug in 0 0.999, that means that I'm at 1.999 if I plug it into my graph. Um, I'm almost to 2, but not quite. And I can keep going closer and closer to x equals 1 to get closer and closer to 2. Um, so that's what we mean by the idea of a limit down here. For limits, it's very helpful, um, if you can, to draw the graph of the function. Um, and then you can see what's going on. It's not always possible, because some graphs are um, very complicated. But let's look at another example where I'm going to examine the graph. So we're going to find the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x. So I'm going to draw what the graph looks like for us. Um, don't worry too much about where I got this from. This is just, um, just to be instructive. I'm going to give you the graph. So we're concerned with our a value this time of being 0. So we want to know what's going on, or what, where do we expect the graph to go to at x equals 0. Well, this is what the graph looks like near 0. So um, it's undefined at 0. Um, that's because you can't plug in 0 for the denominator. I've said that for um, some other lectures already. So we're going to put an open hole here. And then otherwise, the graph is nice and smooth around um, 0. So this piece of the graph looks like this. If you're not sure what the limit of a function is you can try getting very, very close to the x value that you want, even if you can't plug it in. So just like the other one, I couldn't plug in 1. However, I could keep getting closer and closer to 1. So let's make a small table here. It turns out that if you plug in plus or minus 0 0.1, um, you could use a calculator if you wanted, into this, you would get 0 0.998. 3, 3, dot, dot, dot. Well, this is 0.1 away from 0, so let's get even closer. So let's say, OK, I'm going to plug in 0 0.001. So <laughs> get even closer to 0. Um, so I'm just like almost there. And this becomes 0 0.999999, dot, dot, dot. It's not all 9s, but at least the first six digits here are 9s. So you would look at where this is going. As we're getting closer and closer to the x value 0, you can kind of guess now what it should be. We would expect that at 0, the graph should be approaching 1. So this limit is 1. So for any other value you pick except for 0 itself, um, you can actually get a defined value, and it's extremely close to 1. So that's the idea of the limit here. Sometimes graphs actually behave. <laughs> and we really like when this happens. So let's look at this example. We're going to find the limit as x goes to 0 of x cubed plus cosine of 5x over 10,000. OK, so I don't blame you if you don't know what the graph of this looks like off the top of your head, because I sure don't. <laughs> What's important is that both of these functions are very well behaved. The x cubed graph is continuous, and its domain is all real numbers. And you know that from previous lectures. Same for cosine. You can plug in any real x value you want for cosine, um, and it's totally fine. So the domain for this, this function in here, is all real numbers um, and this is continuous. 
So both of these are continuous functions. So if you add them together, you have a continuous function. Um, the moral here is, is that when you have a function that is nice enough behaved, there's no holes in the graph or jumps, you can just plug in this value here to find your limit. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to plug in 0, and I'll get 3, or sorry, 0 to the third, plus cosine of 0 over 10,000. Um, so this cosine of 0 is 1 from our trig video, and you get 1 over 10,000. So that's this limit. Um, we didn't have to draw a graph, which is great. So the moral here is that if f of x is continuous near and at x equals a, then the limit as x goes to a of f of x is just f of a. You just plug in the x value. We're going to talk a lot more about what it means to be continuous and discontinuous in lecture 7. But from now, I'm just kind of hoping that you have some idea of what most nice, nicely behaved graphs look like from high school. So like polynomials and the sine function and the cosine function, there's no like holes or gaps in the, ga the graph. So that's what I loosely mean by continuous. Um, so this very rarely ever happens that you can just plug in the value and you find your answer and you celebrate. So be on the lookout for when this does happen because it does sometimes and it makes your problem easier. Um, but yeah, don't forget that sometimes this could actually be all you need to do. Okay, welcome back. So now we're going to be talking about the one-sided limits. So let me write down the definition for that. So we have one-sided limits. All right, so write the following notation. Write the limit as x goes to a, and there's a little minus sign here to stand for on the left of f of x equals l to represent. And then to really drill it home, I'm going <laughs> to write it out what it means in words. So represent that the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the left is l. Um, similarly, you can define the right-handed limit. So we'll say similarly. The limit as x goes to a from the right of f of x equals l means what I'm going to write in words. So, so means um, the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right. is L. So for this example, or for this definition, we're concerned of being on a certain side of the x value. So before, we were concerned with what the function as a whole is approaching, and we were looking at both sides. Um, let's look at an example of a function we've seen before. So we have f of x equals x over absolute value of x. In, I think, the very first video we did, um, we said that this was equal to x over x, which is 1, if x is larger than 0. And this was equal to negative x over x. I'm actually going to write <laughs> x over negative x to really make it clear that I dropped the absolute value bars here. This is equal to negative 1 if x is less than x. x is less than 0, I'm sorry. And then it's undefined at 0, because you can't plug in 0 into the denominator. So I believe I graphed this function as well before. So at 0, you have these holes. And then on the right side, it's at 1. And on the left side, 
it's at negative 1. So this is what the graph looks like of f of x. So this is my graph of f of x. OK, let's use these one-sided limit definitions now. So I want the limit as x goes to 0 from the left of f of x. So this right here means from the left. I'll actually write the word from, not on. So we'll say from the left. So what you need to do with your finger, if you have the graph, is you go on the left side of 0. So this is the x value I'm talking about. And you follow it on the left side until you get to 0. And it looks like, if I didn't know what was going on over here, it looks like the graph is approaching what value? Negative 1. So this is where we are. So it looks like we're going to negative 1 here. So the left-handed limit of 0, or at 0, would be negative 1. However, if we were to take the same function and now go from the right, so this means from the right, we would start on the right side of 0, so the x value 0, and we would follow all the way on the right until we get to 0. And where do we expect to land? It's at 1. That's where, where we expect to get to. So this is 1. So the left-handed limit and the right-handed limit can certainly be different things based on what the graph is doing at the specified um, x value. Here we say we have a jump discontinuity because the function jumps up from negative 1 to 1 suddenly. That's also something we'll cover very soon, so I just wanted to introduce that now. OK, so let me write this down for you all. So the limit as x goes to a of f of x exists if the limit from the left is equal to the limit from the right. So that's the requirement for the limit, the general limit, to exist. And what I mean by this is I'm not talking about going from the left or the right anymore. So if it checks out that from the left and from the right you're the same value, then the limit exists. So let's look at what happened here. On the left side, we went to negative 1. But on the right side of 0, we went to 1. So in this example, the limit as x goes to 0 of f of x, I can't write equals 2. I'm going to write does not exist. And that's because um, the limit as x goes to 0 on the left of f of x does not equal the limit as x goes to 0 on the right of f of x. They have to be equal for the, for the general limit to exist. So even though both of these exist, um, the limit, the general limit does not exist. So that's something you want to be checking um, for as you're doing the general limit. You want to keep these one-sided limits in mind.